Welcome back to Barrel and Grain. Tonight, I've got a little something different for you. Tonight, we're going over what I'm looking forward to in 2023. So, each year, there's calendar releases. There's a little bit of uh, stuff that comes out to kind of give you an idea of future bottles coming out. And usually, you find more about the spring and maybe a little bit of summer, the fall and winter. You kind of just hear about the names. Um, most part, you find out those later on in the year. Sometimes you do find out some, which I actually have, that I've looked up. Uh, but I want to go over what I'm looking for, and hopefully it's something that you're interested in. And hopefully you might have these on your list for this year looking out. Or it might be something you didn't know was coming out, and obviously you know now. So, with that note, let's get to it. So, my first one tonight is Mystic Galactic. A three-year-old North Carolina bourbon. $75,000 floats around in space for a tie year. One I will not obviously buy, but what I am looking forward to is to see who actually buys this thing and to see how well this really works because for one, it kind of just blows my mind that you could send bourbon up in space and expect it to really change being in a vessel. I can't imagine they just let the casks and float around in space and even if that would happen, I'm not sure how the wood would contract and expand like it would here on Earth, where it's kind of sitting still in a rick house and it's heat and it's cold and it's heat. I figure the weather and temperature is probably a little bit different, and uh, the lack of gravity kind of keeps the barrel from being utilized quite the same, uh, especially if uh, the liquid's just kind of floating around in the barrel. So, assuming they're going to just put it up in a vessel and it's just going to kind of rotate the Earth a few times for a year. So, but on that note, Mystic Galactic, if you got $75,000, you can go try to get one. Obviously, here, barrel and grain, uh, probably not going to be able to get that. And I uh, can't really say I've had any three-year-old North Carolina bourbon yet, but that would be the first one. I think figure maybe I better start with something a little bit lower in the price range before I jump to the $75,000 mark. Anyway, off to the number two, Uncle Nair Single Barrel. So this supposedly is coming out. In January should be out right now when you see this video I have not seen in my area it's coming in at 120 proof um, it's uncle nearest I mean everything so far has been pretty good from them uh, Tennessee whiskey I've had their 1856 uh, I forget what the there's a other one they have too there's a premium and then there's one that's uh, basically a small batch they had a master's blend I saw come out I've never actually seen that one uh, and they also just released the rye but there is supposed to be a single barrel whiskey, Tennessee whiskey, come out uh, this right now in January. So if it's in your area, you see it, and you're a big fan of the Uncle Near stuff, and you want to try a little Tennessee whiskey, maybe change it up a little bit away from Kentucky, could be a good barrel try. Third one on my list, Woodford Double Double Oak. Well, I love the Double Oak, and it's a staple in my house. Use it all the time, especially my old-fashioned drinks or just to sip neat because it's delicious so everybody loves the double oak the double double i'm really curious about it's a distillery only so on that note unless you live in kentucky it's not going to be easy to get to like me i live a couple states away it's going to be harder for me to get unless i can jump in the car drive nine ten hours to get over there i think maybe even uh, probably about nine ten maybe even a little bit longer um, anybody has and can get me a bottle, send it to me. I'd gladly appreciate it. Uh, but it's most likely to be something I have to travel out and get to. Number four, Penelope Rio. So this one's done in honey. And I hope they don't mess this word up, but it's Ambriana cast. So Ambriana is a wood. It's in Brazil. It's spicy. So you think about spicy and you're like, oh, spicy wood. Well, it sounds good, but then when you mix it with honey, so now you got a little bit of sweet and spicy. A little bit of a sweet and spicy bourbon, hopefully, turns out to be. So Penelope does make great blends. Uh, they put out some of their stuff in the last few years. I actually had their Architect number three with fours out, but this is one of the ones that's coming up that actually sounds like it's going to be really good. The Rosé was out. Not really a Rosé fan. I heard different reviews on it, but it might be something you're interested in. I know I'm, if I see it, I definitely will probably be grabbing one. Hopefully, I can be able to do a review for you and let you know how it goes. Number five, Woodford Historic Entry Proof. 
So historic entry proof basically is uh, putting the stuff in the barrel at the old historic proof. Nowadays, I think you put stuff up to 120, I believe it is, proof nowadays. Before, they used to put it in at 100 to 103 proof. On that note, the stuff comes out a little bit different. It's supposed to be more robust, more flavorful. It's kind of the same concept that Michter's uses. Their stuff usually has a lower entry proof. Number six, Bardstown Foursquare. So, me, I'm not a big rum barrel finish guy. I actually tried one before. Uh, I had the Breckenridge blue bottle. I see it's way down there in the bottom of my shelf hidden in the back. Not a big fan. Kind of ruined the rum cast finish for me because I was like so excited. I was like, oh man, it's going to be great. Never had a Colorado whiskey. The water's supposed to be fantastic out there. And then you're going to put a rum barrel on it and you like, hit the little fork from the ocean on there. I was like, man, this is going to be fantastic. And I was just completely disappointed. So, on that note, it can only go up from there because Barstown is one of the great blenders. Four Square is one of the most fantastic bin companies out there. They're known for going out and finding barrels, specifically blending some. I believe they blend some, but then there's also ones I've seen that are like highly coveted and highly sought after by Four Square. I, you know, I've seen some where they sell about $150 a bottle for some of these. And I've seen some up to 16 and years older. So, on that note, it might actually be pretty good. For me, I'll probably want to find a bar pour first because I'm not a rum cast finish for my palate. But if you're a rum person and you like rum cast finish on your whiskey, it might be your thing to go for. Just while we're on the rum cast finish, Wild Turkey supposed this year is coming out with the rum cast finish too. And from what I can find on the internet, I'm trying to search around now. I've been lucky the last few years and being able to get the last couple ones. But I'm not sure if I really want to spend <laughs> several hundred bucks on a rum cast finish that I don't like. So, like I said again, might be your palate and it might be something you're really interested in. And maybe the Barstown will change it all for me and I'll be back into rum cast finish. But we'll have to wait and see when that stuff's released. Alright, speaking of Barstown, Goose Island. Barstown, Goose Island. Goose Island, Barstown. This is going to be amazing. Now, they did before a KBS stout barrel. And I absolutely love it. I actually just had some the other night. I literally, nothing but stout in the beginning and then rolls into a beautiful bourbon afterwards. It's like having a beer and a bourbon all at the same time. It is fantastic and I loved it. Can't wait to see the Goose Island, what comes out with it. Because I'm definitely going to be grabbing one, maybe two of those. Next one, Widow Jane 14 Year. So this is kind of a new one to my list. I've never been into the Widow Jane stuff a lot before. I got the Decadence this year. I've tried the 10. The 14, I think, might actually be really good. And from what I'm seeing from Widow Jane, they're putting out really good stuff. And it's not a big distillery. It's a craft distillery. They outsource their stuff from Kentucky. Uh, they think they do actually distill a little bit of their stuff, and it turns into blends. But I've seen some of their stuff having, like, Indiana, Kentucky, and I forget who else. It might have just been New York. But they had three different blends into it. So... On that note, it could be a great upcoming stiller. That also is like pulling in barrels that they picked and they're putting out great products. So on that note, if you do see it, it is a little bit pricier side. I've seen some of the Lucky 13s before and they're I think around 150 or so in my area. But crap still, you had to throw one in there because there's always upcoming and some of the stuff you should watch out for because they make great products just like everybody else. And it comes from limestone water, Kentucky, limestone water. New York has a limestone water place, so you might finally get some competition for Kentucky and Indiana. Next one, Orphan Barrel. Everybody knows Orphan Barrel that's into whiskey. They've been around and dumping out stuff the last few years. Uh, I actually had the Rhetoric, I believe it's the 2425. Can't remember, but it's, it's one of the last releases. For me, it was kind of super double, kind of oaky. Um, and I really wanted the 22, we couldn't find it. But the one they're putting out this is the Rye. As far as I know, I haven't seen any Rye's other than the Fable and Folly, which is supposedly a blend of all whatever's left over, and they threw it into a bottle and send it. And you know what I mean? We need the money. <laughs> so, on that note, I've seen people drink it, say it's good. I've seen some people saying, eh, it ain't quite really worth what I thought it was going to be. But this, far, far as I know, is their first major Rye release that I've seen. And it's a 14-year-old rye. 
and they're known to be pulling out their Stitzel Weller barrels and finding these lost barrels that no one else supposedly knows about. So we'll see when that comes out. Could be a fantastic rye if you're looking to add rye into your collection this year. Next one, Old Force 1984. This is supposed to be the John Higgins, John Higgins Legacy. 1984 is one of my favorite years. I was born in 1984. Blands came in 84. Sam Adams came in 84. 84 was a fantastic year, even in my opinion. But anyway, John Higgins Legacy is supposed to come out. Um, I couldn't really find a lot on this one. This is supposed to be released later in the year. So as that's come get closer that year, hopefully find out more details about what it's going to be about and what to expect from it. But you slap 1984 in a bottle, I just might get it for sentimental reason anyway. And because it's an old force of product, good chance it's going to be good regardless. And last but not least, Booker's. Booker's going to put out all four again this year. From what I was trying to find out what the names were, so I kind of expect what to look for, which one is going to be which. The names I can find online right now is Charlie's Batch, Apprentice, Mighty Fine, and Storyteller. In that order. So, Booker's been really stepping up their game. Stuff's been getting better the last year. Uh, I actually bought two of them last year. Compared to the year before, I got one, and I was like, it's not bad. I'm not buying any more. And the price has kind of stayed up there. And people are kind of getting used to prices. It's just how business is today. But anyway... That's what I'm be looking for in 2023. And there's stuff you're gonna be looking for. I'd glad love to hear about, it, especially what everybody else is looking forward to. Um, but until then, like, comment, subscribe, and leave me comments on some of the stuff. There's stuff that you want to talk about, or stuff you want to know more about, or even stuff that you want to tell me about that's coming out that I should be looking for. Because maybe I can find something, try to get it and get a review out, so that way you know exactly what's gonna happen. Or how I came about finding it. Or maybe if I can, I can try to even get you something. But anyway, until then, keep hunting.